Hello friends, I am Vinod Prabhu and I welcome you once again to our channel Seven Sense Aptitude Prep. Today we are going to look at a concept known as clocks. We have a few videos in the playlist. So it starts off from some very basic concepts, moves on to some basic problems and progressively the difficulty level of the questions increases. So I would suggest all of you to start watching the videos in the same order. That is, you start off with video 1, then you progressively uh, watch the videos, videos 2, 3, 4 and so on and pay special attention. We will start off with some very very basic concepts so that even someone who is not familiar with some concepts can catch up with the, the rest of the audience and uh, we will also solve problems to ensure that the concepts that we are discussing is also very clear when we solve the problems. Okay. With that, let us start off with clocks. All the best and happy learning. Hello friends, as discussed, we start off with clocks. In this video, uh, we discuss some very, very basic concepts. And uh, this, uh, these concepts are very important because they will be utilized in all the problems that we will be solving in clocks. So to look at problems in clocks, let's look at a wall clock an analog wall clock or a wristwatch and don't look at any digital clocks uh, what we mean by analog is a clock where the minute hour and the second hands move hmm? so if you look at that wall clock you see that when they talk about the face of the clock it is the front of the clock that is visible where you can see the time so this is the face of the clock just give me a minute. So this is the face of the clock where you can see the numbers. Okay. This is the face of the clock. The shape of the clock is, is round and in a clock you will have three hands. Okay, So if this is the clock, right, you will have three hands. Let us say the time is 2 o'clock. You will have, this is known as the R hand. This is known as the minute hand and then there is a second hand as in the hand that looks at the seconds that move. Of, of these three hands, the R hand which is this and the minute hand which is this, they are important. Okay, We take into account that there are only two hands when we solve the clock problems. The R hand and the minute hand, if you look at the clock, the two hands are not of the same length. The R hand is known as the small hand and the long hand is also known as the minute hand. So we need this because sometimes they say the small hand points uh, at something and the long hand points at something. So we need to know the small hand is the R hand and the long hand is the minute hand. And we know that the numbers on the clock, so they can be math and Roman. In some of uh, the Roman numbers would be uh, for 4 we write it this way and for 5 we write it this way. So, we need to know. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 in Roman would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Not too much um, that we need to spend time on. Just you need to know that these corresponds to 1 to 12 in, uh, in math numbers. Now, how is it divided in terms of hours and minutes? You see a, you see the clock, right? If you see, it, let me draw a very big clock for you. If you draw that clock. If you see this particular clock here, you see that a clock, if something moves this entire angle once, we say that it has covered 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. This entire angle, it, if it covers it, we know that it covers 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is covered when 12 hours are passed by the hour hand and this entire rotation is done. So let us say it is 1 o'clock now. If it has to become 2 o'clock, this hand, okay, this hand has to move this entire thing here. And at 2, it becomes here. So 
this is 2. So, this minute hand has moved 360 degrees in 1 hour. Okay. And in a particular clock, you will see that there are markings here as well. So, between 12 and 1, you will have 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the 5th one, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10th one. So we have 60 markings like that from 12. If you do an entire rotation and come back to 12, okay, you will get 60 markings. Those are the minute markings. And you have 12 R markings. Now, now that you know that these are the markings, huh? let us look at this clock again. I just uh, write. So, you see what is the angle made by the minute hand in 1 hour. So, in 1 hour, the minute hand has moved from here. So let's say if it was 1 o'clock, you will have the hour hand at 1 and the minute hand at 12. In 1 hour, if it is 2 o'clock, the minute hand is back again at 12. Which means, the minute hand in 1 hour will do a complete rotation. And the angle made by the minute hand in 1 hour is 360 degrees. Okay. Now, if in 1 hour it is making an angle of 360, what is the angle made by the minute hand in 1 minute? So, how do we find that out? So, in 60 minutes, right, in 60 minutes, the angle made by the minute hand is 360 degrees. So, what is the angle made by the minute hand in 1 minute? 1 minute, you can say in 60 minutes if it is doing 360 degrees, in 1 minute it should do 360 by 6, 360 by 60 which will be equal to 6 degrees. So, angle made by the minute hand in 1 minute is 6 degrees. These are all important numbers for us to uh, know and remember because we can't uh, solve this when we do every problem. So, remember angle made by the minute hand in 1 hour is 360 degrees. So, in 60 minutes if it is doing 360, in 1 minute to do 360 by 60 which is 6 degrees. Now, angle made by the hour and in 12 hours. So, let us say it is 12 am. I said midnight night at 12 o'clock. Okay. So, you see that the, sorry, you see that the hour and is also here and the minute and is also here. Hmm? Minute and is also here. It will it'll overlap. So, at 1 o'clock it will come here hour and 2 o'clock it will come here, 3 it will come here. So, at 9 and from 9, 12 o'clock, if it moves at afternoon 12, at afternoon 12, 12 hours have passed, right? So, the hour end is again here. It would have turned like this and come back here. So, the hour end in 12 hours follows 360. Huh? So, you know that the hour end has moved from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, angle made with the hour end in 12 hours is 360 degrees. In the entire 12 hours, it would have uh, made one full revolution. So, you know, in 12 hours, so now it is 12 hours, right? Minute and in 60 minutes is 360. Hour and in 12 hours is 360. So, in 12 hours, if he does 360, okay? So, in 1 hour, what is he doing? The hour and in 1 hour, he will do 360 by 12, which is equal to 30 degrees. So, minute hand in 1 hour, minute hand in 1 hour does 360. So, in 1 minute it does 6. Hour hand in 12 hours does 360. So, correspondingly, hour hand in 1 hour will make 30 degrees. Remember, these numbers are very, very important. So, what is, now, now comes the tricky part. Angle made by the hour hand in 1 minute. Okay, angle made by the hour hand in 1 minute. So, we know that in 1 hour, it is doing 30 degrees. Okay, we have gotten it here. Huh? So, 1 hour is 60 minutes. Right? 60 minutes is doing 30 degrees. In 1 minute, the hour hand will do how much? 1 minute, he does, he does 30 by 60. So, it is half a degree half degree okay not 50 degrees half degree 0.5 degree so angle made by the hour and in one minute is 0.5 degrees
how many minutes should pass for the minute hand to rotate 30 degrees we know that we know that between 12 and 1 2 3 so we know for one hour as we just looked at that in one hour okay the minute hand moves 360 degrees and in 12 hours we know that the hour hand moves 360 degrees now let us look at how much time is taken by the hour hand in one hour so hour hand is at 12 at 12 o'clock and at 1 at 1 o'clock which means it has moved this much in one hour it has moved this much in one hour how much is it 12 hour it follows 360 degrees in one hour the hour hand has followed 360 by 12 which is 30 degrees so from 12 to 1 the hour hand moves to 30 degrees right so we are saying how many minutes should pass for the minute hand to rotate 30 degrees you can solve it this way and say from 12 to 1 if the minute hand also moves from 12 to 1 it would have covered 30 degrees so the answer is 5 minutes answer is 5 or the other way to solve it is the minute hand in one minute is moving 6 degrees okay to do 30 degrees how many minutes should pass so the answer will be 30 by 6 which is also 5 okay what is the extra angle covered by the minute hand compared to the hour hand in one hour so if we remember the values from the previous uh, page in one hour hour hand for covers 30 degrees in one hour the minute hand this is our hand this is the minute hand in one hour the minute hand does 360 degrees so the extra angle you get is 360 minus 30 330 and minute hand gains dash minutes on the hour hand area so this is not about the angle it is talking about how many more minutes are covered so when the hour hand moves let's say it moves from 12 to 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock the hour hand has moved from 12 to 1 and the minute hand has moved from 12 and made a full rotation and come back to 12. So, you know, the minute hand, if you look in terms of minutes, the hour hand has moved only 5 minutes, that is from 12 to 1. So, it has covered 5 minutes. Right? The minute hand has done, has covered, has moved from 12 to 1, 1 to 2, and then from 11 to 12. So, it has covered 60 minutes. Minute hand has covered 60 minutes. Which means, the minute hand has covered an extra 55 minutes. So, minute hand gains 55 minutes on the hour hand every hour. Okay. And this is one fact. In one hour, the minute hand and the hour hand are 90 degrees apart two times. So, let us say take um, 2 o'clock for example. Okay. So, from bit, uh, between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, you will find that the minute hand and the hour hand are there are uh, at 90 degrees roughly two times okay so this is two o'clock right so where, when would they be at 90 degrees roughly around 225 okay not at 225 slightly after 225 they will be at 90 and at three o'clock also so between two o'clock and three o'clock they are at 90 degrees two times Okay, so this is 90 and this is also 90. So both these times are between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So in this video, we looked at the two important hands of a clock, which are the hour hand and the minute hand. Don't worry about the second hand. Questions are not asked on that hand. Uh, the minute hand and the hour hand. And the hour hand is also known as the small hand and the minute hand is also known as the long hand. We looked at the angle made by the hour hand and the minute hand in one hour and one minute. So to recap, the angle made by the hour hand in one hour is 30 degrees. Angle made by the hour hand in 12 hours is 360 degrees. Angle made by the minute hand in one hour is 360 degrees. Angle made by the minute hand in one minute is 6 degrees. Angle made by the hour hand in one minute is half a degree. 
time taken for the minute hand to make the same angle as the r and does in one hour the r and in one hour does 30 degrees the minute hand only takes five minutes to cover the same angle so what's next just view the video once again if you want to be absolutely thorough with the concepts in this particular video and remember these degrees and these values that we have looked at and we practice 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 that's the only key to become better in any quantitative concept and we learn where these concepts are used in video two thank you and before you forget so for all uh, the video lectures on all concepts and solve problems this is our youtube channel seven cents aptitude prep for people who are new here if you liked uh, this particular video and this playlist request you to like uh, the videos uh, subscribe to our channel and share it with uh, your friends and if you need uh, more courses you need test series and company tests you can visit our website www.7sensetalent.com you can sign up and log in and uh, practice uh, all the uh, resources that are available for you on, on our site okay if you have any queries and if you have any questions in this video and in any other video that we upload please uh, in, uh, write that in your comment uh, section here and we will respond it either in the comment section or create a separate video for those questions thank you once again